Okay, so uh, I know Eileen is checking time. We have time for a couple of questions. So please, would you go to the microphone? Yeah. Maybe this one. Um, great, great presentations. This is a question for Rhiannon. Um, and I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but do, isn't it true that immigrants would go through some kind of health screening before they come to Canada, and might that explain, I mean, it's not gonna explain the hep C, and I'm just wondering, the second part of my question, I'm just wondering if you're able to look um, at comorbidities and health service utilization among, amongst immigrants who do not uh, have hep C, because yeah. you have that immigration database. So. Yeah, good point, so I didn't get a chance to talk about limitations. Um, uh, the thing that you mentioned, apparently they do not systematically screen incoming immigrants for hepatitis C. Um, for hepatitis B, pregnant women are systematically screened and there are programs uh, for some of that. I think for hepatitis C in Canada, we're a little bit behind. I know in the US they have birth cohort screening as well, um, but here we don't do that. I, I suspect, and it probably varies a lot, there's a lot of research about lack of physician information about hepatitis C and stuff. But I think that you know a large part of people being detected is probably they're showing up with complications and or have some clinical signs, or they have HIV infection or injection drug use, and they're being sort of screened that way. Uh, with respect to comparing with non-infected uh, immigrants, that's very important because obviously you have differences in utilization just because of immigrant status. Um, and we're actually working to get a control cohort of uh, uh, uninfected subjects, but we're sort of waiting on, uh, on that from RAMQ, so that'll be interesting. One more question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. This is a question for Brooke. Okay, this was a, just a great presentation. I, I, what I'm struck by, I'm obviously I'm struck by the results, which were quite amazing, but these were if you like, validation studies, because they have sensitivity and specificity, and, I, and one of the things you didn't really talk about too much is what was the gold standard for the identification of depression in each of these studies, and did that drive uh, the sensitivity? I mean, the fact that they moved their cut points around, was that driven by a poor gold standard? Um, actually, I think that's a problem in a lot of depression screening studies, is that we, like, you can't like you can't do a blood test for depression, right? So this is all done by psychiatrists, and um, we don't actually like I don't know if there's much research on which um, which like which uh, diagnostic interviews are better than others. Um, one thing, so like this was actually from my master's thesis, and um, for my PhD, we're going to be collecting a lot more data. And one thing that we do want to do is like you know uh, distinguish between the like, semi-structured, fully the uh, semi-structured and fully structured interviews, or even different fully structured interviews, different semi-structured interviews, and like try and look at the differences. I don't I don't know the answer right now, but it is something that we're planning on looking at because I definitely think that that could have an effect. 